thanks everybody for coming. For those of you who don't know me, my name's uh, Pastor Brian. I'm Terry and Christie's pastor at Faith Church here in Sumner. And it's just my honor to come out here and, and serve and, and celebrate with you this morning, uh, this afternoon, I guess, laying to rest of Marva. So I, it's been my, uh, it's been a treat to me to get to know just a little bit about her. I don't know that I've ever met her personally, but I rejoice that one day I will get to meet her personally. Uh, so that is that is a joy to me as a pastor here this morning to get to celebrate with you the, the arrival of her to her heavenly home. So uh, let's just pray. Lord Jesus, we just thank you that in the midst of tears, this time to you this morning and just thank you for it. In Christ's name, amen. I'm going to have, uh, Scott has offered here to read the obituary and then after that I'll just give a short moment. I know I heard that everybody was very extroverted from this family so I'm sure there will be a lot of people, a lot of people who want to share. But if there is somebody who does want to share, that would be the time to do it after we read the obituary. I'll give a time for that and then I have some some things to share here this morning. Marvel Leanne Locke, 93 of Old Wine, passed away Monday, November 30th, 2020, at Hillcrest Home in Sumner. Private, private graveside services will be held here. Um, a public celebration of life will be held at a later date. In lieu of flowers, Memorials may be directed to Samaritan's Purse or St. Croix Hospice of Charles City. Marva was born on February 24, 1927, on the family farm in Fayette County near Sumner, Iowa. She was the daughter of Albert and Josephine Austin Potratz. Marva accepted Jesus as her Savior and Lord and was baptized by Reverend Sosky on January 3, 1937 at the Elgin First Baptist Church where she became a member. In 1944, she became a charter member of the First Baptist Church in Sumner, Iowa, and later became a member of the First Baptist Church of Oline, Iowa. She attended the local country school and graduated from Sumner High School in 1944. Barbara worked three years at Blades Variety Store in Sumner, Iowa. She took a summer course at Upper Iowa University, University and that qualified her to teach country schools. She taught at her home school, Banks No. 4, for three years. On November 9, 1951, she was united in marriage to John Locke at the Sumner First Baptist Church and went on to have three children. They farmed for 38 years near Hawkeye, Iowa, before moving to Oline, Iowa in 1989. Marva taught Sunday school at many summer Bible schools in Sumner, Iowa and Canova, South Dakota. She also served many offices in the Women's Missionary Society and was the clerk of the Sumner Church. Marva, Marva loved the Lord and her family. She was loved and cherished by her family, including many cousins, nieces, and nephews. She was a wonderful cook and enjoyed making Norwegian lafsa and krupkaka, as well as such family favorites as scalped potatoes, frozen corn, and deviled eggs. She loved being outside and enjoyed her garden raspberries and yard work. Her family will always remember her as faithful, loving, and kind. Marva was preceded in death by her parents, her husband, her husband John in 2001, sister Bernita and Milton Minky, brother Orville and Verena Potratz, and sister-in-law Ruth Potratz. Marva is survived by her older brother Dr. Wills Potratz and her children Don and Scott Key of Bourbonnet, Illinois, 
Dennis and Gail Lauk of Morristown, New Jersey, and Christy and Terry Lay of Su Sumner, Iowa. She is also survived by her grandchildren, Rachel Key, Ryan and Emily Key, Lauren Key, Ellen Lauk, Rebecca Lauk, Joshua and Emily Lay, and Josie Lay, and her great-grandchildren, Jackson Lay, Kevin Lay, and Leanna Key. Jewish member of the family, and uh, that was always sort of a point of interest, I think, for everybody. And uh, you know, she never it, she, she she was always just super kind to me, and um, it doesn't it doesn't always like that, right? So, although she was very clear in what she wished for me and for our family. I don't think there was ever a day when I felt like she didn't like me. And, um, you know, that, that just kind of speaks to her character. And I can remember specifically um, one day when she was upset because there was somebody who had said something not nice to me. And she, I just remember that as the day she like took me into the family. And I remember her sitting at the dinner table saying, like, as Christians, we ought to be setting a really great example. Like, we, we want people to to live a good life and be kind. And and that was so that was so important to her. And she and she, she she knew that Dennis loved me, and she wasn't gonna you know put me out on the side. And I, I'll just, I mean, that, it meant everything to me. She also supported our children. Um, they came out to New Jersey, the whole family, right? The whole family came out to New Jersey for their bat mitzvahs and participated and this never, ever made us feel like outcasts. Another, <laughs> another outlaw or whatever I am. Um, she, uh, she, uh, we, she really made me feel. Um, both her and John were very non-judgmental. It seemed like um, it was always a pleasure to come home, come, come to their place. And of course, they were pretty good card players. <laughs> 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 they, were, they, were, they would remember every card that was played. And they seemed to be very mild, but when you played cards, 
McCarthy did this whole story. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there's so many things you could say about Marvin, but I, I think the thing that I'll always remember is just how uh, I, I told my siblings that I don't know too many people that love the Lord as much as she did. She really loved God. And it was uh, very apparent. And I, yeah. Like I said, I didn't. I don't think I ever had the opportunity to meet Marva personally, and I wasn't her pastor. And uh, I know that this situation is not entirely ideal. This isn't the normal way that we grieve and mourn. At least it wasn't a year ago. It, it is now, so we just make the best of it. But as Christy shared with me this week, as she asked me to serve, she she gave me some some papers. And as a pastor. gave me a new study Bible for my 18th birthday. As I studied it, I realized God had chosen me before creation. Ephesians 3, 4. We are his workmanship to do good works. Ephesians 4, 26. My favorite bo book of the Bible is Philippians. It tells, don't complain, rejoice in the Lord, don't be anxious. Whatsoever is true, right, pure, lovely, think about such things. Be content, whatever the circumstances. Chapter 5, 16 through 18 says, Rejoice, pray, and give thanks in everything. I wish I could say I have lived a perfect life, but I haven't. The Lord has blessed me more than I could ask for, and I am looking forward to Jesus coming. If I am asleep in Christ or still living on this earth, I know I will be with him. 1 Thessalonians 4:14. 4, one of my favorite verses in Philippians 1.6 Being confident of this, 
that he who began a good work in you will carry it on until completion, until the day of Christ Jesus. I also like Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 that says, Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do. Everywhere you go, he's the one who will keep you on track. That's her very own testimony. And uh, before I met with Christy, I had already committed that I would help her. I just hadn't got back to her yet, and she brought some things to me. And this is something I'm about to read you that uh, kind of links, uh, uh, whether you knew it or not, my family and your family eternally. And I've been beyond blessed by this, reading this and sharing this with my family and others. Um, I'll go ahead and read it. This is a memory that came to Christy. It was just the other night, right? Yeah, it just came back to her mind just the other night. It says, Christy's memory of mom. We grew up on a farm one mile south and one mile east of Hawkeye. When I was at Hawkeye Elementary, in elementary I had a friend named Jackie. It was really Jacqueline, but she went by Jackie when younger. We were on the same bus route as her house, which was about four miles away from mine. When mom's hairdresser retired, she needed to find someone new to do her hair. So mom started to have Jackie's mom, Jane, cut her hair. This was probably in the late 70s or early 80s. I remember one time that mom came home after a haircut and shared with me that Jane was concerned about a relative. He was not making good choices in life. And Jane was worried about the path he was going down. I remember mom making a commitment to pray for this man. Now, I don't know how long she prayed for this man, but I have memory, many memories of my mom sitting on a wooden chair in the kitchen from 9 to 10 p.m. with her feet on the furnace heat register and her Bible on her lap. She would read scripture and pray nightly. She was always praying for friends and family members so that they would come to know Jesus. You know, there are a lot of things I've forgotten over the years, and it blows my mind that this one memory has come to, back to me. I do remember that it was Jackie's uncle, and I'm pretty sure that his name was Charles. I know that Charles never knew my mom. And I, never, and I and never knew that she even prayed for him. I also know that, my, that mom never knew what happened to this man she prayed for. But I do know the rest of the story. I know that there was a lot of years between my mom's prayers and my dad's salvation. But there were many others that actually prayed for your dad, my father, on his path. But I'm thankful for the example that my mom set. She may have been quiet in a gentle spirit, but she was a prayer warrior. I started to read this and remembering that Christy came from Hawkeye. I'm a Hawkeye boy too. Started to read the first name, which was Jackie, which is my cousin, and then the second name, Jane, which was my aunt, and then my father, Charles. Let's see, Marva. Marva, long before I was even a thought, was wrestling in prayer for the salvation of my dad. And uh, she didn't accomplish it alone. In fact, she didn't accomplish it at all, but Jesus did. And it was so sweet to my soul to know that I have this, this link with Marva, that she, she right now stands in the presence of her Savior. And then if she ever does exhaust those streets of heaven and wanders and finds my father, I hope that they can connect and and talk about those days when uh, he was making uh, not wise choices. That in my, that is an understatement. He, he was, oh man. Um, he became a Christian. He got saved, radically saved, he and transformed his he life. Let me know. Yes, he did. Yeah. And because he became a Christian, because he found a church home at Faith Church, Christian Terry's church, I found a home there too, and it's the very church that I pastor today. So, I am blessed uh, beyond measure by this, and I just thank you for an opportunity to get to share uh, this moment of Marva going home.
2 Corinthians 5, 1 says this. For we know that if the tent that is our earthly home, our body, is destroyed, we have a building from God. It is a house not made with hands. It is eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling. If indeed by putting it on, we may not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we groan, being burdened. Not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. Marva is not here. Just like our birth was a change from one destination to another, one address to another, the doorway of death is a change of address is a permanent change of address. She now resides in 100% heaven. She's not here anymore. She stands in the presence of the Lord, the same, Je same Jesus who said to the dying man on the cross, Today you shall be with me in paradise. The body that lies before us is but the earthly tent. The house in which Marva lived among us for a time Tender and reverently, we commit that house to the grave. To God who gave it, waiting for the day when both the spirit and the body shall be again united at the coming of the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this day for your precious, eternal, and unchanging word. We thank you that you are to us the rock of ages and the great I am. In the midst of our sorrow, we thank you for your supernatural comfort and grace. In the face of death, we thank you for your gift of eternal life. In the face of separation, we thank you for the eternal reunion we so eagerly anticipate. We thank you for Marva's life here on this earth. We rejoice now that the day of death is not the end, but the beginning. We thank you for your presence in our lives and our heavenly home. Father, we commit Marva to the earth from which our bodies were originally created. We anticipate the day when spirit and body shall be united again at the coming of the Lord. And we find great comfort in knowing that we can forever be together with the Lord. We thank you, Father, that in these days, weeks, and months to come, these realities and the abiding presence of your spirit will especially strengthen, sustain, and comfort us. In Jesus' name.